Hi everyone, thank you for joining us today. We're going to go ahead and get started with the presentation and we're going to be introducing InfraScale's VMware Backup. You are going to be receiving a copy of this presentation afterward as well as the video. I'll go ahead and introduce today's speakers, uh, founder and CEO of InfraScale, Ken Shaw, as well as our head of product management, Stefan Feimath. So take it away, guys. Thank you, Carla. All right, good morning, everybody, or good afternoon if you're joining us from the East Coast or elsewhere in the world. Thanks for dialing into today's webinar. We've got an exciting product announcement and launch that we're going to be talking about here today. A few housekeeping items before I get to the agenda. First up, if you haven't already found it, uh, find the questions tool in the GoToWebinar software. You're going to need that for a couple of different things. Uh, first and foremost, we love to make these things interactive. It's the best way for uh, us to make them useful for you, and it's, we actually enjoy them more that way as well. A second reason to find the questions tool is that we always give Kindles away at these webinars. Today we're going to give a Kindle away for the person who asks us about the most interesting VMware backup use case. So one of the questions I often solicit from the audience is, tell us about your environment, give me a use case. A use case might be four VMware servers with vCenter managing it and 500 gigabytes of data to back up. So the most interesting VMware backup use case that somebody asks about today is going to win that Kindle. In terms of the agenda, we're going to be going over InfraScale's platform. We'll then talk specifically about the InfraScale VMware backup product. Then we'll look at how InfraScale stacks up, both in terms of uh, functionality and features, as well as pricing. And then at the end of the webinar presentation, we'll have a promotion. So it's worth sticking around until the end. We have a September promotion that can literally save you thousands of dollars. We'll try and keep the presentation component of the webinar to 30 minutes, and then after that we'll be doing live Q&A, and we'll stay on the line to answer questions as long as questions are coming in. And so, uh, first up, I would like to, uh, to I'm going to put a poll on screen just to try and gauge the audience. Um, and so the first poll, which will uh, should be on your screen here shortly, just ask you to fill in what percentage of your customers are using VMware environments. None, up to a quarter of them, 25 to 50. These results come in live and we'll, we'll tell you the results as they come in. Uh, about 30% of you have voted. All right, just, you can quickly select an option on the screen. So far, most of you are saying about a quarter to a half of your customers have VMware in their environments. 10% uh, of you are saying all of your customers use VMware, and interestingly, 12% of you are saying none of your customers use VMware. This might be the wrong webinar for you guys. <laughs> all right, thanks for thanks for doing that for us. That gives us some really interesting information. All right, and please don't hesitate to use the questions tool again to tell us what you're most interested in learning today. Uh, we try and tailor these presentations to what you're most interested in. So if you, you, you know, if you go in there and say, I want to hear about X, Y, and Z, we'll make sure we address that as we go along. So a little about InfraScale for those of you who you know, aren't super familiar with us as a company or our history. Um, this slide here I refer to as the InfraScale triangle. And it came from a lunch I had with uh, Hank Barnes at Gartner last year where we were literally doodling on a napkin about what makes InfraScale special. And I drew these three markets the cloud file sharing market, the endpoint backup market, the server backup market, all of which are four to five billion dollar industries. And I drew a little triangle in the middle to depict that InfraScale very uniquely intersects all three of those markets. What do I mean by intersects? I mean one solution that allows you to handle all of the server backup, endpoint backup, and file sharing needs of your customers or for a large enterprise. And that makes us very unique in the market. Some other statistics about the company, we've been in business 10 years, uh, we have more than 20 billion objects being stored in the InfraScale platform worldwide, a million connected devices on the platform, 12 different sovereign data centers around the world. Earlier this year we bought a company called Eversync Solutions, um, which you're going to hear more about later on in the presentation. Uh, so that was a, we were thrilled to have the Eversync team join InfraScale and now be the InfraScale Salt Lake City office. So. When I talk about how we back up servers and endpoints, we do file sharing, I like to draw this diagram on a whiteboard and 
this is a prettier version of the drawing that I normally do, but across the bottom we have all of the different source devices that we might want to protect. I say protect because that means we might be doing backup, we might just be archiving data, we might want to do a full, full site disaster recovery scenario. But we've got physical servers running Windows, Linux and Unix, we've got virtual servers whether it be individual hypervisors or really complicated vCenter environments, workstations, whether they be Windows or Mac, laptop or, you know, or desktops, and then mobile devices, everything from Android phones up to iPads and tablets. So InfraScale has a solution to back up, to archive, and to perform DR on all of these different types of source devices. And at the top of the diagram, we have three clouds, public cloud, private cloud, and hybrid cloud. I like to say that when you're using our software, you've got, you can pick your, you have your pick of, of clouds, your cloud, our cloud, or any cloud. And we've sort of modified that here. But with public cloud, we mean that you can either back up to InfraScale's worldwide grid in a very turnkey solution. Private cloud means that you, you might already have your own cloud environment, or you might want to go and put it in something like an, an Amazon or an Azure. And then hybrid cloud is a combination of some on-premise technology as well as cloud, for example, using the InfraScale data protection appliances. So no matter what the data protection pattern that you want to pursue, uh, and no matter what the source device that you've got to deal with, InfraScale's got a solution for you. And so at the center of all this is Dashboard. For the existing partners on the line, this is a tool you're probably using every day. For, for people who are thinking about becoming partners, you're going to see a lot of Dashboard. It's really the, the nervous center of the InfraScale platform. And you can see here on you know, in this little screenshot that this Screenshot comes from an environment where it's a distributor with 20 partners beneath them and 112 companies being protected. You've got very quick uh, analytics being presented to you and you can drill down to an extraordinary level of depth. It involves account usage information, activity and alerts, reporting and monitoring, rebranding tools. You can rebrand all of our software right out of the box, policy management for remote control. So the InfraScale dashboard dramatically simplifies the management for large numbers of downstream customers for whatever your data protection scenario is. And so that culminates in this graphic. Um, this graphic came from a, a doodle on a whiteboard by, by Mike Bell, our president, where on the y-axis here we've got a whole bunch of verbs, server backup, endpoint backup, data archiving, file sharing, DR. And across the x-axis from left to right we've got a whole lot of different nouns, smartphones all the way through to high-end database servers. And so whatever pairing of verbs and nouns you want to do, InfraScale can support that for you, whether you want to do full-on DR for some application servers or whether you want to just do some data archiving for some old email data. And it reminds me of something my father used to say to me as a kid. I'd work with him on the farm, and he would always say, son, if you've got the right tool for the job, then any job is easy. And that philosophy informs what we're trying to do with the InfraScale data protection platform. No matter the data protection challenge that you are faced with, no matter the environment that you're walking into, you can be confident that we will give you the right tool for the job, and that will make the job easy. And so that brings us now to VMware Backup specifically, and I'm going to turn the microphone over to Stefan Feimat here in a second, but first, just a little preamble. Uh, today we're announcing one of the most important product releases in the company's history for, for several different reasons. Firstly, uh, all of our partners have been asking for cloud backup for VMware environments. So today we are meeting the needs of our customers. Secondly, we bought Eversync Solutions earlier this year, and today we're launching a product that is a true hybrid of the Eversync technology and the InfraScale technology. So this is the culmination of a lot of work between those two teams, and it's not often that you hear about companies acquiring somebody in May and then launching a fully integrated product in September, but that's what we're here to do today. Uh, and so with that preamble, I'm going to turn it over to Stefan to take us through first. What are the considerations and things you need to be thinking through when you're dealing with virtual server backup in general? We're going to look a little bit then at the limitations of VMware's own products and tools, and then we're going to come back and look very specifically at the InfraScale solution. Over to you, Stefan. Thank you, Ken. So as uh, Ken's father mentioned, uh, it really is all about the right tool for the right job. And so this begs the question as to why would we address VMware differently or directly than we do everything else? 
Um, as I'm sure as everybody is aware, VMware and virtual environments in general are, are prevalent in today's enterprise data centers. Gartner Group estimates that as of right now, 50% or more of server workloads are already virtualized with that number increasing up towards 90% in less than two years. Together with that, uh, virtual environments, VMware specifically, it's really a different animal. And although there are times where a agent-based per machine or per virtual machine approach does make sense, um, there are trade-offs. And there is a susceptibility to waste and to risk in that approach versus a more global type of approach. And so again, to the right tool, to the right job, we'd like to be able to provide with multiple approaches that allow you to do the right thing when you need to. If we drill down into the topic of waste, it really comes down to time and money, uh, or really person hours and, and money. Uh, imagine that you have uh, any number of virtual machines running in a virtual environment. According to some industry uh, statistics, you might have 10 VMs running per physical server. An administrator would have to install, configure, schedule, run, and report on each backup agent for each virtual machine individually. And so if you had 10 or 20 virtual machines, that's 10 or 20 times redundant work. If you now are going to set or modify a backup policy, the administrator would have to do that one by one on each virtual machine individually. And finally, uh, you have to track uh, any newly created virtual machines, any virtual machines that have moved between, um, between host environments in order to ensure that they're being backed up. And so all of this accumulates to a lot of time. Now time is money, and money is money as well. So the amount of money that one has to spend on license fees for agent-based backup on each virtual machine multiplies. The fact that, you have, that if you were to do an agent-based approach, each machine is being backed up without knowledge of the other machines. And so therefore, things like the guest operating system, business applications, and other common sets of utilities will be backed up repeatedly in full, not knowing that they've been previously backed up in another machine. This directly affects the amount of storage you need and the cost of that storage. It also affects the amount of bandwidth you're going to use if you want to further replicate that backup into a cloud-based repository. And lastly, there's a little bit of risk that you know, as VMs move around, if you're not keeping track of the, the backup chain that's, that's happened to it, you may uh, do full backups again just to be safe, which again can increase your storage costs. And I love this slide because of the graphic on the right-hand side, which as somebody who once had to administer backups for VMware environments sort of gives me the chills. Uh, the concept that, every, that you've got to install, deploy, configure, run, monitor it five times, ten times per virtual host uh, is a nightmare. For our MSP partners who've got maybe a hundred customers with a hundred different locations, uh, you, you literally have an exponential growth in the amount of work involved in managing all of that. Imagine instead that you could just have one super smart agent that you could install at the hypervisor level and back up all of the data on that VMware host. And so Stefan, tell us more about the risk component that you alluded to earlier. Yeah, so there's a, there's a couple elements of that. One is making sure that all of the data is protected. Unless you're able to automatically track when new virtual machines get created, that becomes a manual process. If that's a manual process um, where you know, somebody's spinning up a virtual machine, they have not installed a backup agent, the administrator doesn't know that this virtual machine's been uh, created, and now the data that gets created and, and managed there goes unprotected. VMware sprawl. VMware sprawl, exactly. Um, secondly, let's suppose that you actually have to recover uh, data out of the virtual machine, it's actually a two-step process. Now you have to spin up the virtual machine, you have to run the backup, and that whole process can take hours. And those hours during which that's happening is hours during which business is not happening. There are some solutions that will attempt to address uh, the backup of VMware at the hypervisor level, but backing up or restoring the entire virtual machine file is not necessarily enough. If, for example, a user only accidentally deleted one or two files. The need to restore an entire virtual machine to then be able to go in and retrieve just those one or two files is overkill. It could take hours to restore something that should be done in seconds or minutes. So this begs the next question, which is, well, why shouldn't we use VMware's own backup tools? I mean, after all, they developed the VMware environment, and you know they must know their environment the best. 
And yes, that's true, although, but there are certain scenarios which need to be addressed that are not. So for example, uh, they require vCenter to be installed. So if you have an environment where you've got simple VMware hosts running but not vCenter, then this is left unaddressed. Uh, they have backup rep repository size limitations, either two terabytes or eight terabytes in the advanced version. Granted, this is a post-deduplication data size. However, if you have an average number of VMs uh, and you want to go beyond their typical um, cited 30-day retention window, then you might run into some, into some limitations in terms of, of how much you can back up. If you have environments that have a mix between virtual environments, Linux, Unix, and Windows, now you would devolve into having to use multiple tools to, mac to back up data on multiple different operating systems rather than having, say, one tool that could do it all. And then lastly, there's a few versions and or modes of using VMware that aren't supported. All right, so that was a nice setup for how we're going to solve these problems. In the next few slides, we'll walk through what Infrascale is actually bringing to market on October 1st and how it's going to work. Uh, before we get into that, uh, I just want to remind you about sort of the, the different data protection patterns we talk about. So historically, Infrascale has focused on the left-hand side of this diagram, direct to cloud or disk to cloud. Um, historically, everything focused on the far right-hand side of this diagram or direct to on-premise deduplicating appliances. In the middle of this column, you have hybrid cloud or, or D to D to C, disk to disk to cloud. The idea being you've got an on-premise appliance that you can throw massive quantities of data at it, multiple terabytes an hour, deduplicate it and dehydrate it and then ship it off to the cloud securely. And that's the essence of the Infrascale data protection platform today. And so what we're going to look at in the next few slides, which is specifically how our new VMware backup module works, fits into the center of this diagram in our hybrid cloud model. Don't worry, you don't have to buy hardware from us. We can do this all as a software stack as well. So we are at heart a software company. We'll sell you the hardware if you want it. Otherwise, we'll just sell you the software to achieve this D to D to C or hybrid cloud backup pattern. And so what you see here on this graphic is a disk to disk to cloud based deployment pattern. On the bottom right, VMware host number one here depicts your production environment. This can be vSphere, it can be vCenter, uh, any number of virtual machines running on it with each with its own operating system, business applications, and user data. To the bottom left, you see VMware host number two, which in this diagram uh, specifies a host that's dedicated to backup and recovery. And the InfraScale VMware backup module runs in a virtual machine. In orange. In orange. Runs um, as a virtual machine. It is a virtual appliance. And it communicates with VMware, specifically using the APIs for data protection, in order to retrieve the data to be backed up, all of the virtual machines, the uh, operating systems, applications, and user data. It leverages the change block tracking functionality within VMware to only capture differences. And on top of that, it uses our own proprietary data deduplication uh, technology in order to remove duplicate data, such as, for example, all the bits that are the same between the guest operating systems and each virtual machine. So in doing this, we compress the data down to just the core unique essence, store that locally, and replicate it up into your choice of cloud, be it the InfraScale cloud, an Amazon Web Services cloud, a private cloud, or if you wish, a more traditional appliance-based replication. This gives you the benefit of installing a module in one place that can address all of the virtual machines. It gives you the benefit of having an on-site backup for very quick recovery time, as well as a replicated copy in the cloud at a distance for disaster recovery purposes. And one thing I might point out here is this is showing a two-host environment. So on the right, we've got VMware host one, and on the left, we've got VMware host two. We've got our two VMs that we're backing up here. It's worth pointing out that you can actually do this in a single VMware host environment. So you could actually install the red uh, appliance here right onto VMware host one. Um, and DDFS, the technology uh, Stefan is, is talking about, is worth pointing out. It's our patented deduplication system, which is uniquely powerful when it comes to VMware data. We're regularly seeing deduplication ratios of nine to one in production-based environments. Also worth noting that this technology is tried and true. It's currently backing up thousands of VMware hosts, tens of thousands of virtual machines, and petabytes of data in the real world today. One other thing that I will add to this is 
I, meant, I made mention a few minutes ago the fact it's not good enough to just back up the entire environment. You want to be able to drill down in recovery, drill down into the virtual disk files if you just need to be able to retrieve one or two files. And we can do this here. So within, so either locally or in the cloud, we can drill down inside the VMDKs, browse and identify the individual files and folders that need to get retrieved and re recover those and do this in minutes rather than waiting for hours for the whole thing to come back down to then find those files. All right. Now this slide's a bit of an eye chart, but it's actually quite a good takeaway. This is actually the talk track that we've just been going through. And so as you're reviewing this material later, and you, by the way, you'll be able to download this presentation, this slide here summarizes everything that Stefan and I just went through on, on the previous slide. So the benefits of this approach um, are, are pretty much these three right here. We talked a lot about the man hours. Uh, in this case, rather than installing, configuring, and running on each virtual machine, you can do it once at the hypervisor level and, and have it be done. If you're going to create or modify and apply a backup policy, you can do it in one place and have it applied to all of the virtual machines under that, uh, under that backup umbrella, if you wish. Automatically detect new and migrated VMs to make sure they're included in the backup. Beyond eliminating wasted man hours, is also eliminated wa wasted money. So for example, rather than being licensed for you know, one agent per virtual machine, it's one fee for each host, no matter how many virtual machines we have there. And then finally, risk, right? The ability to automatically detect new VMs, the ability to do a one-step you know, one restoration process rather than a two-step process, hence it takes place in minutes. And again, to be able to look inside the MDK, retrieve files quickly, all this to minimize the risk of downtime. And so here, what you see is, on the top left is the dashboard. You'll see a new option here, which is VMware Backup. And you'll see a new screen here on the bottom right, which lists out not just appliances that we manage, but also the VMware Backup module. And we're going to see more of this in the demo. Uh, but in the interest of time right now, let's, um, let's bang on the, uh, OK, so I'm going to do a brief demo now, but we'll do a more extended demo at the end of the actual webinar presentation. It's already 25 past the hour. Um, and so what I'm first going to show is just really quickly how easy it is to set up VMware backup. We're going to be doing a local backup with replication to the cloud. And then I'm going to show you a quick restore. Basically what this boils down to is how to back up a virtual machine in a disk to disk to cloud pattern in under three minutes and how to restore if you've had a disaster in under three minutes. And so you know, the, one of the real headlines here for us is that InfraScale has taken the RTO and RPO from weeks with some vendors down to under five minutes for most production VMs. All right, I've got to flip out to Chrome here, so hopefully that's still coming through on the webinar. Uh, you can tell me via the questions tool if it's not. Um, but uh, what you can see here in the video is, um, so I'll go click through, this is the dashboard. I'm going to click through and look at my VMware environment. I'm adding a connection to either a VMware host or to a vCenter host right here put in my password to connect to that. It's now reaching out over the network to that VMware host. In a second here, it's going to give me a list of all the VMs that are on that host. Here they are. So the, on the left are all the different virtual machines running on that VMware box that I connected to. Adding a VM to be into the backup set. And then in a second, you're going to watch me trigger a backup. So we can go right ahead, we'll trigger that backup. And then as, so do a manual backup, we've got choice of full differential and incremental, very typical uh, options. That's now triggered a, a manual backup. So I'm going to jump forward through the video so you can see that running. This whole video is three minutes end to end, just in terms of how fast and simple this is. And so it's now completed that backup. I can flip over to jobs, and he will see that the job is completed, that the full backup occurred, that the job has already been deduped, which means we compared that data across against other blocks on the system. The whole thing only took a minute and 32 seconds at a gig uh, throughput. It moved 2.4 gigs in this case, so it was a small VM. Now let's flip over and see how easy it is to restore this thing once something's gone wrong. So I'm going to log in again. I'm going to find that job that was backed up. Flip through a bunch of settings where I can choose to name it. Then I'm, actually, that, that screen's worth pausing on. So here I can elect, I'm saying, do I want to boot the machine? Do I want to power it on after I've restored it? 
uh, and do I want to connect it to the network? If it's like an Active Directory controller, you might not want to connect it straight to the network. You might want to log in on the console and make some changes before you do that. Hit go. That recovery is now running. In the interest of time, I'm skipping through. Oh, sorry. All right, so you can see here in the middle of the screen, 13% recovered, 20, 31. All right, recovery is done. Configuring the network, powering on. Machine is now on and idle and recovered. So we've now recovered and booted and run a VM in under three minutes. Here in the vSphere client, you can see that we have this new machine, AWS Storage Gateway re Restored. And so what we did there in, it, it took six minutes, I compressed it down for the webinar. But what we really we did there was we set up an on-premise backup, which then is replicating to the cloud. And then in the case of disaster, we recovered that machine and got it running. Uh, and that the recovery time objective there for us was three minutes. All right, so um, what you saw me go through there was management from the InfraScale dashboard, adding a VMware host, leveraging the VADP and our own patented deduplication technology to radically reduce the data payload, backup using predefined host level policies. I then recovered an entire VM. I didn't actually do the drill down. I'll do that later. Uh, but I recovered an entire VM in under three minutes. And I did it with support for multiple deployment types with a, either an on-site backup, but also disk to disk to cloud or hybrid cloud backup. Um, so both incredibly powerful, but also incredibly easy to use. And so this brings us to one of the last slides, which is, okay, so who is a good or an ideal end user for this kind of a solution? Well, clearly they have to have VMware. Um, it's also very nice if they have at least three virtual machines uh, on a host. Less than that, they can obviously still use this, but they could just as well use an agent-based backup solution. But when you have three or more virtual machines running, then the, the, you know, the, the man hours, the person hours really starts to add up. If they have a mix of environments, they've got Unix, Linux, Windows, some VMware, then one solution that allows them to address all of their backup needs becomes attractive. Even more so if they have a very quick recovery time objective or they want a very tight RPOs, uh, that also, any and all of these attributes really make for an ideal customer. All right. Well, we might wrap up the webinar there. Uh, the phone number is 877-896-3611. Thanks, Stefan. Thanks, everybody. Have a great day.